Hey there guys, so today I want to talk to you guys about Strix Halo. Probably one of the most anticipated launches in AMD's history. You know, it was announced a few months ago and we're just about to be at the point where products with it are going to be launching. What with GMK Tech launching their Evo X2 pretty much tomorrow, at least in China. And well, so far based off of the Chinese pricing, the top tier model that is rocking the Ryzen AI Max Plus Pro 395 and that is with 128 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM and a 2 terabyte SSD will cost about $2,067. That's a pretty ridiculous price for a mini PC and well it's not exactly the outlier in terms of price point. We already have a device that launched with Strix Halo that of course being the ROG Flow Z13 that ended up launching a little while back and had essentially exclusive access to these chips for a little while there. And well, based off of the performance of this tablet device, it really is a fantastic chip, but this form factor couldn't exactly take full advantage of it. So we've all been very excited to see it finally hit desktop. And while many PC manufacturers have been very excited to jump on and tell us about their upcoming coming releases. One of the more exciting announcements was the fact that Framework is also jumping in and selling their own desktop motherboard and even desktop computer that is based off of Strix Halo. So you can get the motherboard itself or you can get it in a box desktop setup for essentially $300 more. It's not just the case, it's the power supply and the cooling system that goes in there. So it's not exactly a bad deal, but the price points that it's at are still pretty eye-watering. See, with Strix Halo, the memory is soldered on. So however much you choose to get is how much you're going to have and you can never do anything about it. And the way that these are configured, the prices are a little misleading. For example, let's take a look at the framework desktop. The lowest end version has the AI Max 385, and that's with 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now, this only ends up costing you $1,100, but that is an 8-core, 16-thread CPU with only 32 cores on the iGPU, as opposed to the 40 that are in the Max Plus versions. So there is going to be a noticeable downgrade in CPU and GPU performance, and that's still already coming in at $1,100. Now, if we want that full chip experience, the 16 cores and the and the 40 graphical cores well now the minimum price is a thousand six hundred and that's with 64 gigabytes of ram and look you might think that is perfectly fine for you and chances are yeah 64 gigabytes of ram is more than adequate but again you can't upgrade this down the line this is all you can get you can upgrade the storage later but you cannot upgrade the ram so you might be fomoed into thinking you need the 128 gigabyte version especially since everybody is so obsessed with running AI stuff and especially running AI stuff locally, there have been demonstrations of Strix Halo running some LLMs fully on the system itself because of its extremely large memory capacity. With 128 gigabytes of RAM, I believe you could allocate up to 96 gigabytes as just VRAM. Now that's a lot of capacity for some of these large language models that, that need more RAM than your raw performance. So you might be tempted to go with that higher tier. And well, that's now $2,000. And sure, this is for the desktop setup, but if we do the same thing with just the board itself, it's $1,700 and you need to build a whole computer around this. And look, it's going to be a similar problem with the Evo X2. So if this is going to be $2,000 in China, imagine how much it's going to be to get it in the US. And well, that's one of the biggest downside. Strix Halo is the most exciting launch that has ever happened to APU enthusiasts. You know, I've been following the APU market now for, it might be at this point, 12 or 13 years, maybe even more than that. I remember back when they were doing APUs when Ryzen wasn't even a thing. The APUs were the most interesting thing because I knew a lot of people who had these budget laptops that had these APUs based off of AMD chips and because of that, they were able to 
play Minecraft. And that was what was always so awesome to me about APUs. It's that somebody with a cheap laptop could just suddenly start playing games with their friends. And you know, as you see the APU market develop, you really start to fantasize about, oh, what if there was an APU that was so powerful that it can start to replace graphics cards? And it seems like such a great idea because in your mind, you're thinking, well, this is going to be the greatest thing to ever happen to budget gamers. But I, I never would have imagined that it would come to pass that the APU that is able to replace graphics cards is going to be in systems that are as expensive as the most expensive graphics card in existence right now. And, you know, that might not have been so bad if we were all the way back in 2015, you know, where a high high-end graphics card was six seven hundred dollars but no we now exist in a world where two thousand dollars is a good deal on the highest end graphics card on the market for consumers and well now you have the choice of do you want a two thousand dollar graphics card or do you just want a two thousand dollar mini pc and it's not like that mini pc is comparable in terms of performance to that graphics card in fact while the radeon 8060s does seem really interesting at that price point it's just not all that interesting considering that you're getting the performance of a decently powered rtx 47 so, okay great performance right there pretty impressive but you don't have access to all of those rtx features and you can buy a laptop with a 4070 for a cheaper price or you could buy a desktop with a higher end graphics card for that price or cheap because the desktop top version of the 4070 is far more powerful than the mobile version so again if this was something that was pushing the budget market right it was in mini pcs that were seven eight hundred dollars this would be a revolutionary moment because amd would essentially have the diy playstation you know the diy xbox the diy steam console you know people would really consider do i get a playstation 5 pro or do I just get this PC that you don't need to think about a graphics card, you don't need to think about the CPU, anything like that. You just plug it in, you boot up Windows, or if you install something like Bazite on it, or you know the full release of SteamOS that is coming out soon, you'll have essentially your own console. And even if it isn't as powerful as a PlayStation 5 Pro, the fact that it is a full PC means that it's not just being a console. It's a multifunctional device, so it's an easier sell than just getting a PlayStation 5 that you're going to use for three games a year. But at $2,000, no one's going to consider that. If already at over $1,000, you're looking at the GIMPed version, the one that is going to be weaker, that is slower, then you're in a pretty tough spot. And so far, every Strix Halo system is pretty expensive. Even HP, who announced both a mini PC and a laptop that are going to be coming with Strix Halo. They're all pretty much starting at $1,500 and above. And that again is with the tiered system that we see with the different chips. So if you want the top end version, that's going to end up costing you a lot more. And look, there's an easy explanation for why all of this is so expensive. The fact that everybody on the planet is relying on TSMC to make all of our chips essentially has created a situation where only the most high-end and expensive devices can realistically be made on anywhere near a modern node. It's why we've effectively seen the death of the Ryzen 3. It's why we've seen the low end effectively switch over from previous generation products being rebadged instead of new products being released that are meant to be cheaper. Because you cannot produce a Ryzen 3 on the four nanometer node that Drix Halo is on without essentially taking a loss at whatever price point you put it at. It's partially of why the Ryzen 5s in general have been in a bit of an awkward spot because as prices have gone up, they kind of just get priced out by previous generation Ryzen 5s and previous generation Ryzen 7s and Ryzen 9s that are now at a reasonable price point. You know, unless a new generation comes out that has massive 
massive leaps in performance, you're usually better off shopping at lower price points. And look, Strix Halo is still one of the most interesting releases that I have ever seen. It's truly impressive what, what AMD's APU team has been able to accomplish. But the fact that it is effectively just a toy for rich people is really disappointing to me. I liked the original idea of APUs where they were essentially the champions of the budget gamer. You know, because I know firsthand the people that essentially relied on these budget APUs to be able to hang out and play games with their friends. It sucks that that group that really were the heart of the APU market, of the APU consumer base for most of its existence, it just sucks to see them abandoned like this. And I mean, there's not much AMD can do about it. Because, you know, AMD's not setting the prices at TSMC. And the fact that AMD, Intel, Qualcomm, NVIDIA, MediaTek, and every other major chip manufacturer in the world relies on TSMC right now, it pretty much means that they can set the price of everything. And that realistically mostly means that we get priced out of the cool stuff. You know, Strix Halo is the most interesting launch that I will probably never own. I'm certainly not going to spend $2,000 on a mini PC. Even if it would do great on YouTube, even if it would be a boost in my career, how could I justify spending $2,000 on a mini PC and then sit there and tell you to do the same thing? In my mind, I just can't, I can't do it. It could be the greatest thing ever. And at that price point, I just cannot do it. Buy yourself a laptop or buy yourself a desktop that's just slightly bigger. At $800, we have something to talk about, right? We have something revolutionary. But at $2,000, we effectively just have a toy. But what do you think of the prices? Because in all honesty, I feel like I've been so disheartened because while there's so much cool stuff getting announced, all that's been happening is prices have been going up, obviously because of the tariffs, but also because it's just so expensive to make new stuff that a lot of the times that the things that you see announced right now, you will not see in products that you will even think about buying until another two, maybe three years. But again, let me know what you think of these prices. Are you still excited? Is this something that you would want to buy? Or not really that would you want to buy it? More the, along the lines of, are you going to buy this? You know, because you can have the desire to buy it. I'm sure a lot of us would want to buy this, but how many of us are realistically going to spend $2,000 on a mini PC? I don't know. Let me know down below. I'll catch you guys in the next one.